I've seen a lot of people make these tier list videos on every level of a game. I mean, Sonic alone has a number of them done. And last time I checked, there didn't seem to be one for Shadow the Hedgehog yet. I mean, well, there is a top 5 list, but I couldn't find one that went over every single stage. So, with it being my favorite game and all, I thought it would be fun to give Shadow the same treatment. Obviously, we're gonna go through all the levels and talk about some of the stuff they have to offer. Y you know, like, uh, environments, gameplay, missions, level design, ETC. The higher it is, the better it is. We all know how these work. All of this is just my two cents on the topic, by the way. I I'm, I'm purely just trying to have fun with this. Uh, yep, that is all I have for the intro, so let's get right into it. Starting with the first level, Westopolis, and I think... It works as an introduction to the world of Shadow. It does a good job at showing off the key features that distinguishes this game from the other games in the series. Weapons can be used to kill enemies more easily, vehicles are an alternate way to traverse the level, and we have full control over Shadow's fate because we get to choose which mission to complete. Speaking of missions, I think they work really well in this stage. With the simple design of the layout, all three of them should be a breeze. Also, I absolutely love the sharp contrast this has to the usual Sonic opening level. Like, normally our adventure starts off on a nice, warm day at the beach, or a cool jog through the streets of a city, or a variation of Green Hill. Shadow plunges headfirst into a dull, grim city in the middle of an alien invasion. A war between Gun and the Black Arms are happening right before our eyes. Hell, the very first thing we do in the game is skydive off a building as a barrage of missiles are being shot from above. If, if that's not an opener, I, I don't know what is. My only real complaint is how frequently it has to be played. Westopolis will always be the first level of the story mode, and if we want to unlock the last story, we have to go through the same level a minimum of 10 times. I personally did not mind this, but for the average player, it becomes repetitive, annoying, and stale. Although, this really isn't the level's fault, it's just how the game is. Aside from that, it's good. Glyphic Canyon, you know what? I'ma say it belongs in A rank. It's not too long, not too short, the rundown ruin in a dusty gorge is a cool take on the desert level, and the tornado is a nice touch as well. What this level handles exceptionally well are its missions. I say that because all three of them are not stressful. That should have been a consistent thing in this game, but it is not. Getting to the goal ring is always a fun and easy challenge. The jewels in the dark mission are all in plain sight, so we don't have to go out of our way to activate them. And the hero mission is surprisingly forgiving. In every other Find These Specific Things missions, we need to track down every single one of them in the level. If we accidentally pass one up, the game won't tell us which area the last one is in, so the most logical thing to do is transport back to the first checkpoint and then replay the entire level again in search of it. That is not fun, that is a chore. However, despite needing to defeat 60 aliens, Glyphic Canyon houses considerably more than that desired amount, which lessens the chance of angrily replaying the level. Many of the missions would be better if they were generous like this one. Also, Knuckles says damn from a hint bubble, that deserves some bonus points. Damn. Mm, anything bad to say? Uh, the music is fine. I love the entire soundtrack, including this one, but it's just one of the least appealing stage songs to me. But overall, this level does a lot of things right. I feel like this would be the poster child for what the other levels should aim to be. Digital Circuit is fire. First off, both the missions are essentially goal ring, so no reason to backtrack, and second, everything else. They really went all out on the cyberspace theming, from the beams of light that we can grab hold of, to the electricity that sparks around our feet as we move around the terrain, to the circuits that transport us at high speeds. And there are so many bright colors to look at, it's practically foreign to have a level this eye-catching in shadow. I haven't even mentioned the music yet.
the spotlight gimmick is a heap of fun, especially during the part where we have to chain homing attacks to get its attention while above a bottomless pit. That was done marvelously. We even get a close-up of Shadow sliding down a pole. What's not to love about this place? Lethal Highway. I love how the name of each Sonic Highway gradually becomes more and more hardcore. Speed Highway. Radical Highway. Lethal Highway. The layout is sorta adventure-esque to me. It feels natural just running around this place, and I could see it working in those games too. I, I don't like the abundance of death leeches scattered on the roads though, uh, moving at high speeds only to have these guys halt us to a dead stop is kind of annoying. The black and red sludge featured in various sections is a neat detail. It's almost like the aliens are using it to engulf the city. There's also the mandatory knights cameo. I do have beef with the hero mission though. We have to destroy this big moving tank which has a lot of health. I really don't like these objectives, they're just way too slow and we spend basically the entire level just trying to blow up this one thing, it takes way too long to do. It does become significantly easier to demolish once we get the shadow rifle, but that's not unlocked until we beat the true final boss. Although, if we fail, Sonic does get a swear word in. Damn! Overall, it is a solid level. Cryptic Castle. Now, if we were ranking these solely on presentation, this would definitely be in the top three. This place absolutely nails the Halloween look. The dreary, gothic architecture combined with the many spooky set pieces like pumpkin balloons, skeleton lanterns, thorny lampposts, gravestones, pathetically silly jump scares, even the skybox with its blood red clouds and massive crescent moon. Heck, the neutral mission ends with a giant scary skeleton. All of these and more really helps to emerge us into the eerie atmosphere. Bonus points for having a room filled with chow, that will never not be welcomed. It looks the part and it also plays the part. Exploring this level is kind of like discovering the secrets of a haunted house. The Hero and Dark missions are more unique this time around. Rescuing cream and cheese from a mysterious haunted castle is a cute idea. And Eggman needs us to light some giant lanterns which are located in these jack-o'-lantern structures. The level as a whole is great. A rank. Prison Island, a callback to the location from Sonic Adventure 2. Uh, speaking of which, this is one of the few levels in Shadow that actually features the Gold Beetle from that game. The main gimmick of surfing on a river of acid is sick, although the hoverboard we surf with is a bit slow and sluggish, but it's nothing really to complain about. I also like skimming down all the slopes, it almost feels like a water slide. Some of the Black Warriors are behind bars, like they've been captured by the government. I like that detail. The missions are fine, no complaints. Uh, I really don't have a lot to say about it. It's nice, B rank. Circus Park, a second level that's not dark and gloomy. And it's also an S rank. Uh, trust me, that is not the only reason why. Although this place is eye candy if I do say so myself. They really went all out on the theming. A huge assortment of bright lights that pop out, big balloons, glass ornaments, a big dumb circus tent, and you gotta love how Eggman's face is plastered on everything. It doesn't just look like a carnival, it also feels like one. We can jump through some fiery hoops, ring the bell to earn a prize, or climb on top of a tall platform to perform a tightrope act. All of which are well implemented into the natural level design. Plus there's a couple of shooting galleries to partake in. They give us so much to do while running around a giant funhouse. And all of the missions are conveniently fun as well. This level practically gives rings away, so gathering 400 shouldn't be a problem. And the gun units can be found in plain sight. To top it all off, they've managed to successfully compose an edgy circus theme. I'm not trying to sound biased towards this stage, I legitimately think it's fantastic. Speaking of fantastic, haha, just kidding, Central City. Despite having several distinct elements, like being the only level without a goal ring, this still manages to be one of the most uninteresting stages in the whole game. Visually, this place shares the same look as Westopolis. Now, that doesn't automatically mean it's uninteresting. While some levels do share similar themes, one of them will contain major components that the other lacks, which lets them stand apart from each other. 
Central City does this, but not for the better. Parts of the level are covered with pools of poison. Usually this leads to sloppy platforming, and then there's this part where we only have a thin sidewalk to stand on. Granted, we are supposed to be driving a convertible during this part, which makes it better, but hardly 30 seconds later we gotta ditch it because we need to climb upwards, so there's not much to use in the car. And since it doesn't finish with a giant ring, they made the layout of the level a lot more unique. It's far from acceptable, but still unique. It starts off as a circle, which then leads to an open area, and connected to that is another circle, and to the right of that is the sidewalk section, which then connects to another circle. With no real end to the level, they wanted to make Central City sort of like a sandbox, but looping everything was not really the right way to go about this. Yeah, playing this stage for the first time is unpleasant, not only because of the weird layout, but they also expect us to know about the offbeat paths. These can be accessed by exploding breakable walls. The problem is that the walls look very normal, like nothing stands out about them. Again, granted, there will be sticks of dynamite close by them, but they aren't really noticeable on the main path, so we could just run by them without noticing anything. It's especially bad because knowing this is mandatory for the Dark Mission. And to make this worse, Central City's Hero Mission is a contender for one of the worst missions of the entire game. We need to defuse 20 bombs by sucking them up with a gun. Doesn't sound terrible at first, but with the awkward layout, the possibility of not knowing about the walls, and some of the bombs exploding prematurely, well, it's easy to get frustrated. I've been ranting on for a while, but even I can admit that there are legitimately a few positives to say, uh, the main one being that when we complete one of the missions, it is almost impossible to get a poor score. Like, after replaying each of them for a little bit, it gave me an A rank every single time, so for anyone trying to unlock Encore mode, I feel like not replaying an irritating level just to get a high enough score is definitely a plus. Also, Knuckles' dialogue is... Oddly comical. He he counts out loud every time we get rid of a bomb. <laughs> That's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And the level where he pretends to be the count is also the same level where he curses two more times. Damn, damn it! I mean, aside from those, uh, play each mission once, then avoid it like the plague. Up next is liking and subscribe. The Doom. Ah, yes, we all know where this is going. It honestly sort of hurts to put it this low, because the setup for this stage is phenomenal. Black Doom tries to persuade Shadow to join his side, not just by reminding him of what happened on the Ark, not just by physically showing the tragic events from many years ago, but by forcing him to relive it. A flashback level where we get to guide Shadow through the most treacherous experience of his life? How do you mess that up? Well, similar to Central City, the level design is very, shall we say, distinct. Well, I probably shouldn't describe it as that, because if it were distinct, I'd know where I'm supposed to be going. Navigating this place is a nightmare. It's not linear like the typical level, it's set up more like a maze. The paths are nonsensical and winding, and everything is divided by rooms, each with multiple entrances and exits. Some lead further into the space station, while others will bring us to a previous area or a dead end. This in itself is maddening, but it could have been better if we could tell the rooms apart. It is so easy to get lost because not only does everything look the same, but they reuse every room like five times. Whenever I come across the same area, I don't feel like I'm progressing. I have to constantly think, have I been here before? And the developers knew this level was disorienting because they put maps all over the place. You know, instead of actually fixing the problem. And because of how tedious it is to get off course, the missions are made much harder than they need to be because what we're looking for could be anywhere, and our partner does not guide us to the right direction. <sighs> I do appreciate what they were going for. It is a good idea on paper, but transitioning it into the game was disastrous, and they did not try to change it. If the Doom was more direct, most of its issues would be resolved, but as it stands, I believe this to be the worst level of the game. 
On the contrary, we are about to be talking about arguably the best level of the game, Sky Troops. It's like a continuation of Glyphic Canyon, and it manages to surpass it in just about every way. They both share the same theme, but I think Sky Troops pulls it off just a little bit better. The worn down temples make more sense to be in a sandy chasm, but having those temples flying above the clouds and being able to blast ourselves over to each of them is a lot more riveting. Just like its predecessor, the missions are handled very nicely. The objectives are in plain sight, and the partner directs us where to go if there is a fork in the road. And the music sounds determined, powerful, and majestic. Listening to that while piloting a winged beast through a thunderstorm is the icing on the cake. Okay, this next one is definitely a hot take, but... I think Mad Matrix is a good level. It takes another whack at the sandbox layout, only this time it's handled like an actual sandbox. And by that, I mean we get a whole main hub area. It is so open and vast that the player gets a little more freedom on how to complete the missions. We could immediately tackle the green terminal first, or maybe we want to save that one for later. We could blow up the bombs on the left side first, or perhaps we'd want to start on the right side. It feels like the level was designed with its missions in mind. It's not like, Shadow, look, I have this hit list for you. Now go do some sin! Excellent, now where can I find them? That's for you to find out, good luck! It's, hey champ, here's your objectives, you can find them here. They both complement each other wonderfully. Also, bonus points for the hero mission. All the terminals have colored tiles we have to match, and I do like how each of them uses that gimmick to their own special way. They make for fun little challenges. I've been saying nothing but positives, but there is one massive flaw. It's apparent what we have to do and where we have to go. Actually getting there is the problem. See, we get from place to place by using this large electric circuit. Its arrangement is reminiscent of a web, and the spider who wove it had one too many drinks. To put it bluntly, the circuit's design has no rhyme or reason. Most of the time it looks like we're going the correct way until it suddenly flings us into another direction. With how many twists and turns there are, it's like navigating a labyrinth. Traveling between terminals for the hero and neutral missions aren't really bad. It might get mildly annoying to get set off track, but it's definitely serviceable. Contrarily, the dark mission takes place exclusively in the circuit. There are 30 explosives that need to be set off. There's only 30 explosives. We need to find every single one. In a massive perplexing network. Need I explain why this is awful? Like the Doom, there is only one huge problem, although this time the many pros outweigh the one big con. Up next is Death Ruins. Death Ruins. That is the most try-hard name they could have gone with, and I adore that they did. Even the music is trying its hardest to be overly hardcore. <laughs> Edginess aside, it's honestly underrated. It's a very fun run from start to finish. The giant slingshots are an exhilarating way to move from point A to point B, and I also like how we're able to jump out of them. It adds a little bit of depth to the gameplay, although in the middle they are almost completely absent. Putting a few more in here would have been nice, but uh, this is more of a nitpick. An actual problem with the level is its length. This is probably the shortest level of the whole game. I mean, it took me less than three minutes to reach the goal. Although I suppose it's better to have something short and sweet than to have something overstay its welcome. The Ark. I had a tough time deciding where I wanted to put this. On the one hand, the idea is pretty dope. It's a vehicle level where we get to fly around the Ark and come across some level designs from Adventure 2. If we want, we can even drop down and relive those sections on foot. Albeit, they are incredibly short, but it's a neat throwback. That being said, flying to the end for the neutral mission is a nice trip down memory lane. On the other hand... The dark mission? We need to blast the defense systems. There's only four of them, and they are easily encounterable, but... They have too much health. Destroying them is more time-consuming than it should be, and if we take too long, then we have to find the nearest checkpoint, go back, and try again. 
and sometimes we might not even bother with the checkpoints because they're all on the ground and we're feeling confident with ourselves, so when we miss one, we gotta replay the whole stage again. It's exhausting. I think the dark mission is the only bad thing, though. The rest is pleasurable. Air Fleet. In this stage, aliens are invading a government structure, so the president has to be escorted to safety. The hero and dark missions play into that idea handsomely. We can either get rid of the black arms to make the president's escape more secure, or this. I, I don't even think I'm allowed to say that. It's got another one of those destroy the big thing missions, but this one is the least offensive. The machine gun is the most common weapon, so we can get a hysterical amount of ammo, plus there are a number of turrets if we want to save up on bullets. There's also some small chunks that take place outside, and I like how it has a different feeling from the inside. One has a bigger focus on platforming, while the other one is more hallway-oriented. Both are equally fun. The sunset view above an endless sky looks gorgeous. Mm, what else to mention? Uh, oh, oh yeah, of course, the uh, the spin dash is actually useful in this level. Iron Jungle? Man, I really want to like this one, but it, it kind of just exists. The layout is fine, the theming is fine, the dark neutral missions are fine. This contraption in the background looks kind of neat. I'm grasping for straws here. Really, the only things that stand out about this level are some of its rubbish qualities. The hero mission is another one of those destroy the big thing, only now it's Eggman's blimp. The main weapon of this level is the rocket launcher. Although powerful, they lack the auto-lock function that most of the firearms have. That brings me to my next point. There are rooms where we need to defeat all of the enemies in order to resume. These can be skipped by jumping over the boost pads and grabbing the pulley, but missing it requires us to fight the shadow androids. We may as well forget about using the homing attack because they are resilient as heck, so the best thing to do is use a weapon. You know where I'm going with this, we will most likely have a rocket launcher, and trying to aim at tiny moving targets is not a fun time. Aside from those things, I don't think the level is bad per se, it just lacks pizzazz. Space Gadget This level has two completely different paths depending on which mission we choose. I mean, technically a lot of the other levels do this, but usually it's only for a small portion at the end, or we be heading in a different direction and then quickly find ourselves on the main path again. Here, they split us off basically the entire time. It all depends on if we blow up the second defense unit. Both of the routes have a different feel to each other. Hero and Neutral takes place primarily outside with high-speed action, while Dark is mostly indoors with a bigger focus on platforming. There's also a gravity-changing device that is only featured in this stage. It either steers us in the right direction, or it's used for some puzzle shenanigans. The interior gravity portions could have been handled with a little more care. Walking on the ceiling is pretty cool, but navigating an entire room like this is kinda burdensome. It's also stupid how the neutral and hero missions work. Both of them are about getting to the giant ring, and which mission we complete is determined by... the timer. There's five minutes to reach the goal if we are doing the hero path, but in order to take the neutral path, we gotta wait until after the five minutes are up. So we're gonna be standing there for a whole minute before we can touch the goal. This one definitely had potential for greatness if it wasn't for those two things. Lost Impact. Alright, this may come as a shock. This is not going in E-Rank. For the most part, I see this level as an enhanced version of the Doom. Instead of being set up like a maze, Lost Impact is much more linear. And while the former only has three missions, the latter only has two. I may as well bring this up now. Because of the better layout, the neutral mission... It ain't too bad. It's fairly innocuous. Also, I genuinely think the turret segments work. We get to control the speed at which it moves, and... <laughs> Good lord, is it destructive! Look at all these bullets! While those are improvements, it's still got its fair share of problems. Uh, just like before, there are way too many rooms that look the exact same. And yeah, the layout is simpler, but it's nowhere where it needs to be. So many alternate routes just lead to a dead end. 
However, none of that compares to the biggest atrocity of this level, which is its hero mission. It is hands down the worst in the entire game. Kill a bunch of tanky artificial chaos while navigating a confusing level with many different paths that look too damn similar. These buggers can be hiding anywhere in this level. It is incredibly easy to miss a few, and we don't know where they can be, so we replay the level, check every nook and cranny, and there's still one missing. It is... infuriating, to say the least. Even with this one mission, I still think Lost Impact is the less horrendous out of the two. One contains the worst mission, while the other one contains the three runner-ups. Gun Fortress, we get to break into a government stronghold while listening to elevator music. That is all that needs to be said. Black Comet. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. It really does feel like infiltrating a top secret base, what with the abundance of soldiers guarding the cores, many doors trying to heat our progression, lasers trying to sizzle us, even the few moments where we're seeing through the security camera's point of view. There's also a shocking amount of neon blue in this stage. The glass, the barriers, the grind rails, the pools of electricity. It's not really what I expect from this place, but it looks good. It's a fun run through and through. A great way to end off the dark path. Black Comet. First, the good stuff. This is a pretty level. The abundance of alien aesthetics are awe-inspiring. Strange glass on the floor, light purple tunnels, some weird light fixtures, the mysterious red and purple liquids with shimmers of blue and green. The strange mist, I can look at this place all day. Definitely one of the best looking stages of the game. And accompanying the sweet visuals is a chill soundtrack. Now the bad stuff. The Dark Mission could've been better. Eliminating 50 gun soldiers in one playthrough is unusually easy, but I just think this level is too huge to have an objective like this. We can spend quite some time on this one. The pacing as a whole is extremely slow. Similar to Prison Island, we got a ride on the hoverboard for the majority of the level, but instead of being speedy, frantic, and direct, it's steady, leisurely, and open. And considering how fast we're moving, it makes this lengthy level feel even lengthier. It's got its ups, but also has its downs. Lava Shelter. Ooh, this one. This one has it all. Fast-paced action, an original theme, two fun missions that alter the player's route. I think this stage has a wonderful balance of speed and platforming. Jumping from block to block doesn't really slow us down, and traversing lava-filled hallways is an entertaining challenge. There's also a big emphasis on grinding here, and honestly, I think it's the best it's ever been in the series. It's quick, fluent, responsive, rail switching being more automatic is much more reliable compared to the previous games. It's satisfying, I, I wish more stages had this though. It is a little easy, especially for a final level, but because of how enjoyable it is, I hardly see that as a problem. Cosmic Fall. Oh, jeez, oh, jeez, I'm definitely gonna get a lot of hate for this one, but... Hear me out, hear me out, l hear, let me, just, let me, who's got the talking stick? The concept for this level is a bit outlandish. The arc is collapsing, and we have 15 minutes to escape. Uh, I mean, describing it like that, it kind of sounds like we'd just be spending the entire time inside, trying to get out, which honestly would have been completely fine. But they decide to go the extra mile by having us parkour off of the falling debris hurtling towards Earth. They even play into this idea by having some of the platforms spin, teeter, and rotate. It makes for an entertaining test of skill. Admittingly, there are extended periods where nothing is happening, but I personally see it as the level being more cinematic. Especially with all these unique camera angles, it kind of puts me in the moment and gets me thinking, Ooh, what's gonna happen next? Also, both of the missions are about reaching the end. Only for Vector, the computer room is a little further. And this stage undoubtedly has the best reward for collecting all of the five keys. 
Oh, right. Uh, so for those who don't know, in this game, there are five keys hidden in each level, and once they've been collected, a special door will open. Usually they have something that doesn't really help us out, like giving us a car in a level that wasn't really designed for a car, or a powerful gun that is very limited on ammo. Cosmic Fall bestows a switch that makes numerous trails of rings appear. This allows us to quickly and easily lightspeed dash to both the goals, almost ensuring an A rank for either mission. There's one part where we can't get the camera to look down, but that's kind of my only gripe. The rest of it's awesome. Okay, final haunt. Alright everybody, say it with me. S rank! Yep, we all knew where this was going. So I'm just gonna make this one short. It is fantastic. It's got a delightful design, fun missions, a cool alien environment reminiscent of Black Comet, powerful weapons. All of this is accompanied by the funkiest bop I've ever heard for a level. Alright, and now the true final level of the game, The Last Way. Uh, no. This is just a mashup of Final Haunt and Black Comet. I guess it makes sense in the context of the story for it to be like that, but having the grand finale be a mixture of two previous levels feels lazy, like we're kind of being cheated out, you know? With that said, the level design is still acceptable until we come across one of the countless dead ends. The only way to move onwards is by using chaos control. I do like that idea. The main focus being to fill up the hero gauge in order to fly over the obstacle can definitely work. I just think the execution could have been better. Killing the enemies is always a constant stop and go process and the dead ends bring the pace to a screeching halt. Now, Chaos Control can be executed whenever we want, not only when we're stuck, but sometimes it stops us directly in front of a dead end. So then we're just patiently filling up the gauge again. It's kind of a crummy way to end the game, honestly. Alright, that is my list. Wait, there's also the bosses. Um... They're not levels, so should I give them their own video? Ah, I don't really have a lot to say about them, I'll just get through them in rapid-fire succession. Black Bull! The music is extreme, but the rest is mid. It's the easiest one, and it's not really all that compelling. Hit the eye, and that's kind of it. We get to fight it twice, and I'm not sure which one is better. They both go in C rank. Egg Breaker! Eggman refuses to shut up, and I find that hysterical. The fight itself isn't bad, but it still isn't good. Eggman usually spams the same attack and constantly gets in our face. It's got three variations, uh, Mad Matrix and Cryptic Castles are... They get C tier, uh, Iron Jungles shakes it up a bit, he stands in the center for the first half, and gunning him down with the turrets is oddly gratifying. B tier, B for best breaker. Heavy Dog and Blue Falcon, I'll just clump them together because they are the same exact machine, just in different arenas. Being able to use the boss's weapon against the boss is always a cool idea, and I love how it's handled here. Do enough damage to the attached RPGs, then pick it up once it detaches. When this happens for Blue Falcon, we gotta jump to the bottom, get it, then use the spring to bring us back to the top where the action is, while for Heavy Dog, we just pick it up. Blue gets B, and Heavy gets A. Black Doom. I love how the lower his health gets, the more attacks he'll whip out, and he does it in a way that doesn't make the player feel too overwhelmed. I, I wish we were able to attack him more often, instead of only after he unleashed his last attack. Otherwise, a solid fight. B. Egg Dealer. A battle where Eggman constantly hurts himself because of our gambling addiction. Genius. Eggman doesn't deal as much damage to himself as I think he should, but overall it is a fun time. B. Sonic and Diablon. Fun fact, the first time I fought them, I didn't even know we were able to shoot him, so I only used the homing attack, and that took me over 5 minutes to complete. 
Even now that I know when to use the guns, it still moves at a snail's pace. He always has his shield up and only drops it when we land on the ground. It is long and boring. E. Devil Doom. Look, Black Doom having a super form is intriguing as hell, and the design is absolutely off the walls. That's all it's got. Sometimes whenever we aim a charged Chaos Spear in his eye, it locks onto one of the many laser balls surrounding him. If we get too close to him, he'll teleport off in the distance, and then we steadily make our way back towards him. But we technically need him to do that in order to get more ring balloons to stay in our super form. It just drags on. C. Okay, now this is my list. Like I said at the beginning, this is only my two cents. I know there will be a lot of placements that you won't agree with, and that's perfectly alright. We all have different opinions and viewpoints. Also, thank you for sticking around and watching the whole video, it really does mean a lot to me. Also, also, I just finished making some edits to my outro. Uh, I practically poured my heart and soul into it, so I, I really, sincerely hope you enjoy it.